Hey you guys, what's up? I'm in New York. I'm with part of the Color Girl E, Ivy Coco, and we've got a few other ladies here with us. We are, yes, we're um, getting our lives together right now. We just got through security and we're gonna go um, get into our gate, get checked in, and we are then getting on our flight to Morocco. We're all bag ladies this week. <laughs> Definitely did not pack light. I did my best, y'all. I did my best. I'm gonna do a video, you guys, about my packing tips because it is a whole science. Wait. <laughs> you bombed you. Yes, I love it. You're vlogging? Yes, we're vlogging. You're on the vlog. Hey, see, you you camera ready. I stay camera ready, boo. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's exactly, we bought that life. See, now you're camera ready. Stay ready so you don't gotta get ready, okay? Stay ready. One eternity later. Oh my gosh, we had a four hour layover, or no, a four hour delay on the runway before we even took snow. And it was, how long was that like, seven hours? Yeah. Crazy. We're happy to be here. Yes. On the ground, okay? On the ground. <laughs> We are in the airport, but we missed our connecting flight to Marrakesh, so we are now going to catch a bus for like two and a half hours-ish um, to Marrakesh that the airline is going to provide us, so they're going to bus us there and, you know, after being on the flight since yesterday at 5 a.m., uh, I'm kind of tired of being on a plane and I'm also just kind of tired of traveling at this point, but it is what it is and we're at least we're on the ground. Um, so yeah, we're safe and we're, we're good. So hopefully we get there in due time and maybe I'll just sleep yeah, just on the bus. We'll see. Oh, <sighs> okay, so I finally made it in my room. You guys, I already just posted on IG stories how freaked out I was walking into this room and just the hotel in general. Oh my gosh. This is our hotel. It is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, so cute! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! This is too much! This is too much! Oh my gosh, y'all, what? This is my suite. Ah, I'm like dying. I'm, I'm, I'm literally dying right now. Oh my God. But I'm about to head to dinner. Um, I think we're gonna eat in like the next few minutes or whatever um, at uh, Jean Antoine's, uh, which is the next hotel over, which is where everything is going to be going on this week for the retreat. Um, but we're at basically like a next door neighbor hotel since they didn't have enough room for everybody. So we kind of were like the overflow people. Well, I was, but girl, I ain't mad because, okay, that's a sneak peek, okay? This hotel is just gorgeous. So yeah, it's been good so far. It was definitely worth the struggles of travel that we went through. And I just wanna let you guys know, so this is gonna be a larger conversation that we have. Um, you guys are gonna see this video first on lipstick and curls, and basically, long story short, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting Jade Chronicles content on this channel. I thought about a lot of different things, that, which I will explain to you guys later, but basically I'm gonna just start integrating the content that I want to do for my other channel onto here. I hope you guys are excited as I am. It's been an adventure already and we haven't even like started. So yeah, I already know this week is gonna be absolutely amazing. I'm so excited. So yeah, stay tuned. Hey you guys, what is up? What is up? It is day two in Morocco and we are about to be in the Saint Laurent Museum. It's supposed to be super beautiful. I got my whole outfit today so I can take some bomb photos, okay? In the museum and around it and whatnot. So it's 
gorgeous out right now. It is like probably about 75 degrees or so with like a cool breeze. So it's literally perfect. of fellowship. Father God, I ask that every heart, every ear, and every mind be open. Lord, download an understanding. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place today. Lord, so that we will leave here and never be the same. Show up, God, in a way that only you can. Father God, release my sister's mind from Egypt. Satan, let God's people go. You don't have any authority in this room, this place, or this space. God, we will forever give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I took this moment not to wear any fancy clothes, although I do rock this, running around with kids. But I wanted you to understand that we're in battle. This is a war that we're in. And it's a spiritual war that we're in. So I need people here to understand today that you have to continue to walk away dressed mentally for the battle that you're going to be in and continue to be in. And if you know the Lord, you can't keep saying, oh, when is this battle going to be over? Because the answer is never. It's gonna always be until you die. The, the key to that battle though, is to make sure that you are emotionally prepared, spiritually prepared, and you are armed with the things necessary to handle your purpose here on earth. See, God can't show up in certain situations that you have not been through. I always say I can't talk about what I haven't been through. That's the honest God truth. How can you console, counsel, work with, educate, illuminate, operate, open up a path, provide opportunity for anybody, for anything, for something that you haven't been through? See, a lot of us are trying to be something that we're not. We're discovering and looking for ourselves because we're discovering and looking for ourselves in all the wrong places. We're using things like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, who said, she said, some article that we've read. Your definition and your identity, you already have. Let me explain something to you. The devil is no fool. 
We all waiting for a big fiery uh, thing that we have seen with horns and a tail that's swagging and fire breathing. How many of you know that the enemy was a beautiful angel? He was a master at words. He was a lyricist. Okay? How many of you know that not every angel even in heaven had the opportunity to go before the throne of God? He was the one. And he got beside himself because of that. So what happened was, when he would see all the worship and praise that would be given to God, he thought, oh, I should be able to have this worship and praise. How many of women have you ran into that that sounds like? Right? How many women have you ran into where they're supposed to be helping you and they're trying to steal your identity? <laughs> How many women are you working with that are competing with you and not complimenting you? The God I serve and the one I know, he ain't ran out of money, ideas, and creativity yet. He is an originator of all things. And if there is something that has transformed somewhere in your life through some challenges that you may have had, please believe and understand that in your pain, there is purpose. Without struggle, there is no strength. You have to be able to identify who you are and why you're who you are. I didn't have any friends who were doing the work that I was doing, so I felt very alone. I didn't have any mentors, I didn't have any friends who were doing communication, marketing, or advertising. I didn't belong to groups. Um, really, and so I just kind of felt like I was doing this job and this work by myself. And so I had this you know, idea in my head, like how am I gonna achieve a vice president by 30? And that's like the fast track, so not everyone does that. But that's like if you're on a fast track, if you're really serious, if you really wanna, you know, et cetera, et cetera, your goal was VP by 30 at this company. So that was my goal, and I was like, how am I going to achieve this goal if I do not see people who look like me at all in leadership? that this is going to be impossible because the only girls that were getting VP by 30 were white women. So it's frustrating, especially in conversations where you're meeting with your boss and they're telling you, you are doing everything right. You are doing great. You are exceeding. You are doing wonderful. We love you. All, these jazz, all that jazz. Okay, then why am I not getting the opportunity to travel like Ben is on the account? Why am I not getting promoted like Vanessa is, because I'm so great, why isn't it being reflected in my salary, and why isn't it being reflected in my opportunity? So, I knew that I had to do something about it, so I partnered on with this girl, and we knew like five people, and I knew like four people, and we're like, I was like, I had this idea, and I was like, let's do a luncheon, let's bring people together, but more importantly, let's, we're gonna hear from an executive and hear her story and how she got to where she was. But more importantly, we need to know the people in the room. Because so often we go to events and networking spaces like this, and we don't even know who our neighbor is. We don't know their name, we don't know what they work. We know nothing about them because we're so focused on the person speaking that we miss out on each other. So he was the first black congressman in France. So it was the first time that the son of a freed slave was writing the law of friends wow. around wow. a big table of old white men. Wow. And in Grand Loop, where he's from, there's not one town without a, a street to his name. Achilles had a daughter. It's a female retreat, so I'm going to talk about my incredible grandmother. Achilles had a daughter and four sons. My grandmother was the oldest. And she went to law school in the 20s in France, and she was the only woman and the only black woman. And she, she dropped her studies because she thought it was more interesting to become her father's parliamentary assistant. And West Indies and Guadeloupe was, you know, a culture, a, a society of plantations with very racist white owners who had a problem with this young black lawyer who was constantly defending the rights of black workers in plantations. Because as soon as one wanted to ask for something, you know, trying to start a union or something, he would just get killed. And then there was my grandfather who was threatened many times, who was taking this to court. And because Guadeloupe is part of France, and France, you know, the mainland, you don't want too many problems there, they would allow him to win his cases. And once, as a congressman, he was sent to jail, 
because of a plot that the uh, wealthy white plantation owners did. And my grandmother, who was probably 25, stood up in the French Congress as a black woman, this was in the late 20s, wow. to defend her father. Wow. She came back from West Indies when she heard that her father was in jail, and she stood up and defended him. So this is from this talk that I'm coming. And um, there's been lawyers in all generations, and even though my son believes he's not going to be the fifth generation, <laughs> he is more, he's much more of a lawyer than any of ours because of his passion for refugees' rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, the project um, that is being supported by all of you attending here is about the migrants' rights and the refugees' rights. And this is why I want to speak to you so you understand why we are organizing all of this apart from the fantastic motivation of having all of you here and thanks to Tori and Victory Fabulous Organization and all of you here. So um, when um, there's a Moroccan icon, her name is Christy, um, Leila Alawi. And Leila Alawi dedicated all her life to migrants' rights and giving a voice to people who had no voice. I love it that you, know, you become advocates, ambassadors, and help us. That this thing called Global Migrant, please tag it, please make it known. And if $20 can help, you know, and on the global giving link, they say what you do is $25, what you do is $50. And on the flip side, there are some people who are really well educated, have their PhDs, and they'll find a way when they cross over. But even three months ago at the church, there was, I came across a Malian who barely spoke French, couldn't read, and French was the only European language that he had any knowledge of, and he barely spoke it. I mean, when he shows up in Europe, it's really hell waiting for him. It's, here in Morocco, it's going to be hard, but he can find a solution. If he can't read, he can find a solution. In France, he can't do anything. He can't work even at McDonald's without being able to read. And, you know, Everybody has their story, but for some people, it's just having the right information from when you start. This is exactly what Amy wants to do, is give the right information to people back home. Because she was promised something that she never had. She was promised Algeria would be something. And she wasn't told about the Sahara in between and what she'd come across. And she has stories we didn't mention here, because she saw things that were really tough. And when she was in Algeria, people promised her Morocco. And she had to walk 25 kilometers across the border with her baby and her little kid to get to a border which is obviously very secure and, and difficult to cross. So, you know, and people like this, they really want to make a difference. So, yeah, if we support. What is day is Today it? is day four. Today we are at four. the Morocco Polo Club. And I guess they're going to play polo for us. Yes. Everybody. I know. This is what we call Black Excellence. Yes, okay. This is Black Excellence. Oh, grrr. This is today's look. I did like a, like an orange vibe, gold. This is what we did. I probably should have redid my hair today, but we're letting it kind of be Afro-like. And um, I kind of like it. Mary, yes! She got on the horse. She's out here. Terry is out here living her best life. I love it, Terry. <laughs> you gonna do the exhibition too, girl? <laughs> oh my god, this is so cute. Good morning, you guys. It is day five here in Marrakesh. So I'm just waiting on the car to get here. It's literally around the corner, so. I am um, been sitting out here just kind of like being around the scenery and listening to the birds and it's like super calming and chill and I'm also going to do like a little mini social media session with a few of the ladies here just to kind of like give them tips and tricks and stuff so I'm really actually excited about that because I'm actually working on something for 
uh, to roll out to you guys um, that's on like a similar wave. So um, I've gotten a lot of input and um, advice and inspiration from a lot of women here. So I'm actually super pumped about the future and like some things that I've been thinking of and kind of vi trying to create a vision about but not really knowing how to put it out to you guys in the best way. And so I got kind of like a blueprint a little while I've been here. So that's a great thing and I'm excited to um, take everything that I've learned this week back with me because it's really been phenomenal. I cried like every, at least one time, the first three or four days we were here um, because it was just that like, like hit me in my soul like so many women who are sharing their stories talking about their struggles their triumphs where they've been where they're going and it's just really really like the energy here is unmatched you guys like i know that there's going to be more of these trips and i have to tell you guys if you were really seriously interested in this trip and chose not to come the next one do not miss because this experience is like not like anything else I've ever experienced um in the best way possible so yeah it's um I'm still kind of like digesting everything from this week so that's why I haven't been like really talking too much to the camera in this vlog because I've literally been like experiencing everything so it's been great it's been really great and it's like really um the the states think the the center of Europe is UK but it's it's not, not it's not yeah. even near no, to the center it's like i explained to you it's like uh the uh the u.s yeah north america is it's a country divided in states yeah yeah we yeah. are we are a continent divided in countries so right the language barrier the culture barrier we, we have there. everything <laughs> after my first year there was more than that you know we only practice about what an hour a day if so if you can do that and what happens when you get off the mat 23 hours after that you know like how do you deal with life how do you deal with your reality your world and how can yoga help you with that so it's not necessarily about what goes on on the mat it's actually what happens when you get off and so taking your practice from the mat into the world some of you guys this week experienced that when you were doing certain poses, you felt certain things and you're like, why am I feeling this? It's because now you connected your mind, your emotion with your body. And that's what yoga means. The word means union. You know, the mind, the body, and the soul. That's all it really is. It's not a cult. It's not a religion. It's none of that. It's a lifestyle. It's a well-being. How do you connect all three as you should? You shouldn't separate. And a lot of us do. You know, women, we tend to separate our emotions from our bodies. That's why we body shame, we feel guilty about the way we look, we judge how we look, because we recreated and society created that separation. Men, they have the emotional separation. Same thing. They've done it or society has made them do it, their parents, whatever it is. And so, what yoga does, it, it helps you be well all the way around. It's not always on the outside. Okay? So, this class, Please stay warm because we're not going to move a lot. We are going to be in poses long, but we're not going to move a lot. So 
what this class would be like, it's called Yin Yoga. I don't know if you guys have ever attended that class, but basically you'll sit in poses between three to four minutes. Oh, wow. They're easy poses. <laughs> Very easy subtle poses, everybody should be able to do it. Does not I'm so connected with your mind and your emotion that you're not even going to feel like you're able to do it. So with each pose, there's going to be a word. With each word, I'm going to start to trigger you. I'm going to start to lift, open you up. Emotions that you've been surpassed, like oppressing for the past years, 30 years, 40 years, 50, however many years you've been doing this. I'm going to start to move in those layers. I'm just going to talk. And then you're going to start to also move those layers because you created them. You've been holding on to a lot of things and it sounded like a, okay? So if you start to feel like you need to cry, let that go. Do not hold it in. Because that's what you've been doing for, for the past years. Enough. Above your knees, whether they're crossed or in front of you, just have them up. Spread those fingertips. Allow the energy to enter, enter your fingertips into your body. <clears throat> Settle in, sit bones to the ground, ground yourself, balance yourself. Shoulders back and down. Deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Truth. What is your truth? Have you taken the time to figure out who you are? When you hear that word, what does that mean to you? Have you been living your truth?